This next meeting or next lecture is actually a website. The California Irrigation Management Information System or CIMIS. And so there is a link here to CIMIS that'll take you to this page here. Now, in order to use CIMIS, you need to have an access account and it's free and they don't care who you are. They just need to collect data. So you click on log in <coughs> uh, to log into it. But first you have to click on register actually and fill out your information. What's your name, first name, last name, email address. Uh, you can use your personal or Hartnell, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, however long you want this account to be available to you. Uh, make sure you're not a robot and register. And it will ask you a couple questions about who you are and if you're using this for professional uh, purposes, what your job capacity is, but you know, do, do the best you can. Um, and so here I'm logged in. Welcome, Stephen. It gives you an overview about the website on the home tab. There's many sub tabs. Getting started, you could read this about how does the CIMIS site work and what you can or can't do. A little bit on the staff system news and frequently asked questions. Again, I'm not gonna go through this. It's your job to go through and poke around here. Then we have the stations tab and there is a list of uh, 20 pages worth of sites, 264 sites. A number of them are inactive. If you noticed in the beginning pages, inactive, inactive, inactive. So they've moved around, they've deactivated sites, reactivated sites. So I'm not exactly sure what it is, but there's somewhere out of the 264 sites, I think it's around 200 or almost 200 that are currently active sites. Why do they have the inactive sites? The data is still there. So they don't throw the data away. If you want some historical data based on the, um, you know, the Claremont Los Angeles site, look it up the data is still there from when it was active. Uh, station locator map, here you can see uh, the map and how they're distributed throughout California. And you know I can just zoom in uh, to a given area, click, click, grab it and move. So here's the Salinas Valley, click, click. And there we go. You can see North Salinas, South Salinas, um, three out here in the Monterey Peninsula area, further up the, the bay uh, towards Aptos and Santa Cruz, some stations, et cetera. So you can see where these stations are and I can click on any one I want, Soledad, bingo, uh, I point to it, click on it, tells me the name, the number, latitude and longitude of exactly where it's located. So you can look very, very specifically at the state of California and how these sites are set up um, throughout. Uh, siting information, this I covered in the other lecture, but what does it take to create a site you know, on proper irrigated grass area, blah, blah, blah. You could read the details. What are the sensors and not just temperature, solar radiation, but a lot more specifics of exactly what they have for total solar radiation, what's called a pyra, uh, pyra, bleh, pyranometer, pyranometer. Um, the pyranometers are specifically these models and makers, so they have an exact scientific description. So you could reproduce their sites exactly. Soil temperature, air temperature, wind direction, wind speed, and precipitation, tipping bucket gauges, um, so that's how they set it up and some maintenance. Uh, there's also spatial information, uh, spatial CIMIS, and this is kind of state-of-the-art information. The, the standard CIMIS models are based on weather data that's been collected for decades. And the spatial CIMIS is far, far more sophisticated uh, using um, spatial modeling, satellite uh, collected information, 
pretty fascinating. I think you, you would be uh, wise to read about it, find out more about how that works, the spatial maps. Uh, you can look into the details, the spatial reports, and um, you can actually schedule a specific spatial report based on information that you want. The data is where I go most of the time. Of course, the site gives me a curveball here. Let me go back in data. There it is. So data, I have to be logged in to get the data, but I need to choose the report type. An hourly report or a daily report? Daily only gives me the averages. I always like the hourly report. I can have Excel do the daily averages, uh, but sometimes all you need is the daily report. Depends on what you're asking of the system. Uh, daily ETO variance, variance, a monthly report or a monthly average evapotranspiration. ETO, so these are based on a standard grass. You need to adjust them based on your data. I almost always like the hourly report. And then what type? A web report literally kicks it back in front of you on, a, on the web page. XML, the extensible markup language, XML. And that is wonderful for uh, reports that are going into some of these web-based apps or phone apps. A lot of the apps that we deal with today, they speak extensible markup language, which is the superset of language that is the language of the web. And so XML is, it looks like Greek to the eyes. It's really hard to read, but they're not intended for you to read. They're intended for a computer to read and display information through an app. A CSV report is a comma separated values report, comma separated values, extremely small files, extremely efficient and they kick out a file that can be read by any spreadsheet application like Excel. So comma separated values are my go-to type of report. And then a PDF, well, it creates a PDF file that you can download, rename it, whatever you want. And I'm gonna start with a web report just because it'll show it on the screen for this lecture, English or metric units and a range of days. All right. November 15th to the 22nd. That works for me. I'll just leave it there. And we'll start with the Five Points Station in Fresno. Let's keep it simple. Do I want anything advanced? No. I'm just going to run the report and it kicks back my hourly data. Now, this is probably too small for you to see, but every day, 24 lines of data for the 15th, there's everything that happened on the 15th for the hour, the evapotranspiration for that hour, the precipitation for that hour, solar radiation. You can see the sun rising. You can see this little pregnant, looks like a snake that just ate when you look at the whole line. Bunch of zero, zero, zeros, then you get sunrise, then you get the sun shine through the day, then it goes back down sunset. That's the solar radiation. Vapor pressure or barometric pressure, that's something we haven't talked about. Um, but it is an important weather data. Air temperature, relative humidity, dew point, which is related to temperature and relative humidity. Wind speed, wind direction, and soil temperature. So it's all there for all of those days from November 15th through the 22nd. Um, and I can see it, I can read anything I want. Um, now they have missing values. Uh, not sure what's going on after, maybe the data's just not updated yet, or maybe something happened to the station, it went down, but this is the 20th, Friday at 3 a.m. it went offline, missing data. So I don't know if the data need is going to be there or if it's missing because there was a problem with the station. M means missing data, um, or maybe it just hasn't finished being uploaded yet, I'm not 100% sure. So let's do that again. But in this case, I'm going to go for Oakville up in the North Coast. And this time I'm going to go for a CSV file. 
and I'm going to run the report. And it kicks it down into this hourly.csv file. It's my job now to um, create the file name. So I'd have to say Oakville, blah, blah, blah. And I don't care what it says. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open this file in a text editor so you can see what it actually looks like. It's just a string of numbers. Like what the hell is all this? It's just um, all of these numbers and a bunch of commas, comma, separated values. Um, and it's got all the data there, but really hard to see any of it. Now this one, the missing data starts on the 22nd, that's today at 1500 hours or three o'clock. That seems normal. That doesn't look like a station down to me. That's just a, you know, a few hours out because I'm currently at 9.15 p.m. Um, so we're only talking hours ago and this data will probably be there tomorrow morning. Um, anyway, what if I were to open that CSV file instead of in a text editor to look at the actual contents of the file. What if I opened it up in Excel? It automatically knows that the comma means another column. So I've got the station number, the station name, the region, the date. Now I can't see the date because it's too small there. Um, the hour, 100 is 1 a.m., 200, 2 a.m., 1200 is noon, 1300 is one o'clock. So this is military time all the way up to 2400 midnight. And then it starts the next day at 100. And all of these um, precipitation, solar radiation, all the data is here. And I can feed this into any kind of spreadsheet, database. There's hundreds of different ways that you can use CSV files to feed into applications and um, uh, other database tools and research tools. And it just depends on the tool. Sometimes CSV is the go-to best thing, sometimes XML for web-based applications is the best format. It, it's up to what you're trying to do. But that, don't save, that is how you use Simis hourly data um, or any data and it, it's hugely valuable and I know tons of people who use this Simis website every day. I used it every day for years and would collect hourly data and when I would do my calculations on that uh, it would be five years of data from every station. And for some, that would mean five years of data every hour for five years. And if I'm doing a weighted average, that's times two stations and at doing a weighted average between those stations. That's a massive amount of data to figure out crop harvesting models. Does it matter? Not really. If you go in every day and you gather the data, you plug it into Excel, um, at any point in time, you can tell Excel, grab the five-year average of this data and run the numbers. And Excel just does it. it takes a matter of moments to, for Excel to run through massive amounts of data. That's the beauty of computers. So that's it for Simis.